Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the Slow Crafty Podcast. My name's Nadine and I live in the northwest of England and uh, this is a bi-weekly podcast. Oh, I've got a co-host with me today um, about uh, trying to incorporate a slow fashion and slow living approach into my crafting endeavours. So I cover knitting, spinning, crochet and uh, sewing and a whole range of other um, fibery goodness. Now, uh, normally I would record this on one day, but I've had six small children uh, this week, uh, so I'm trying to squeeze this podcast in when I can. Um, so you might get an odd face popping up in the corner, having a nosy at what we're doing, um, and uh, the other one's thankfully asleep, so we shall uh, hope I can manage to get through this before she wakes up. Okay, um, I've just got one one uh, finished object to show you this week, because like I said, I wanted to get get this over quickly but I wanted to get some content out there. Um, okay, uh, last episode, episode 8, I spoke about my plans to make a couple of vests um, during during this, this month um, based on this pattern. It's Simplicity 8153A and I was doing view C which is this long vest top um, although I did opt for the, the square bib on the front. Um, it's a dotty angel pattern. I really love her style and um, just just the, st well, the, the styling of the actual outfits and the, and the fabrics that she uses as well. Um, now, I, I showed you two lots of fabrics that I was planning to use. Uh, a green one with cats on and uh, a white one with uh, sort of orange and brown matryoshkas on. I have only managed to make one of them so far this month. Uh, I'm hoping to get the fabric cut out for the second later this letter today. Um, so I've made the green one and here it is in all its glory. There we go. It, it was actually uh, quite a straightforward uh, sew. The, the th I think the thing that it's taken me so long because um, the children have been been ill on and off for um, the past couple of weeks. First one starts with it, and then the, the, the next one comes down with it. So I've not had chance to get my sewing machine out. Um, so I've been doing it mostly by hand, uh, except for one night where I did stay up late and and did a bit of uh, machine stitching on on it. But I'll show you that in a minute. So it's. I don't know if I've got some kind of body dysmorphia though, because I was cutting the pattern pieces out, and I'm thinking this looks huge, surely I'm not that big, which I tend to do quite a lot with the pattern pieces, um, but clearly I am that big, But although the, this top is a lot wider, uh, so it's got a lot of positive ease uh, on the construction, because it's got a, a tie back at the back, if you can see around the small child's head, um, which cinches it in a bit, but it, when I, it, it just seemed looked massive when I was cutting the pieces out. It is, isn't it? It fits really quite nicely. Um, and next episode, I might even I might even wear it for you. Um, so things to know. There's a bit of cotton there. Even though I made the longer uh, version, the uh, you know I have that wool, darling. Um, even though I made the longer version, it still seems quite short in the body. Um, I even changed the way that I hemmed it as well. I, I hemmed it with bias binding rather than doing a, a, a full hem, just so I reduced the amount of fabric I was I was cutting. Oh, well, I was reducing the bottom by. Um, oh, I was taking up at the bottom, and and still it seems very really quite short in the body. So I think if I'd have made the other view, which is this one, I'd have ended up with some kind of crop top that finished just under my, my bosoms but um, no it, it, it still works nice but I just have to um, be mindful of what I choose to wear on, on my bottom half um, so there's a lot of bias binding used in this it's, it's used all around the um, armholes and on the front of the neckline and then I used it around the, the, the hem at the bottom as well which because I've made quite a couple of Dotty Angel patterns now, I'm getting quite comfortable with, and I think it looks makes a really nice finish. Uh, the 
No, we don't need to see Owl, darling. Bye. He is beautiful, but we don't need to see him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, um, one of the other bits that took me quite a while with this top as well is the bib. Now, I didn't have any um, sort of c commercial fabric in, in a patterned print that I liked the look of. Um, <laughs> Sausage uh, that, that went well with the with the um, cat fabric. So I decided that I would um, do some fabric manipulation on just some plain cotton. Now I, I uh, experimented with some natural dyeing. I pre-modernized my cotton with rhubarb because uh, we've got an abundance of that on a, a allotment at the moment, and that was relatively straightforward and worked quite well. Um, now, this can you just just mind out the way, Sita? Thank you. This has been over dyed quite a few times because um, the first attempt I used um, I did an all over a dye with dandelions and um, tried to do some eco printing with sort of leaves that and and flowers that I found in the garden. I wasn't really very successful. I don't think I had the right ratio of flowers to fabric um, to make a, a noticeable difference. It just came out looking slightly grubby. I mean, it still looks <laughs> slightly grubby now, but um, more so. Uh, uh, then I, I re-dyed it with, um, or redid some eco printing. Oops, the daisy up again. Oh my God. Oops, the daisy. <sighs> I did some. Um, Eco printing with you see these purple bits here with some tulips that were that we've got growing up at the allotment and um, that worked quite nicely actually but it didn't look um, it didn't have enough interest in it to to, to work with uh, the fabric just with that um, eco dyeing or eco printing so I, did, I then decided to embroider some uh, just some uh, French knots and some crosses and some stars uh, and then some running stitch um, through it echoing the colours that are in the fabric on the flowers uh, here so I think it actually worked quite well and I, I really like that bit of it um, the lace was some vintage lace oh, goodness knows how old it is because that's again <laughs> People feel the need to give me fabric and wool and various trimmings and I find it very difficult to say no because I, I can always think of a use for it. Um, but that, that again came from um, a friend of the family um, and, and like I said last week this was from my friend's mum. Um, she came around the other day actually, my friend not not a mum and I was working on this and she's like, ah, my fabric from my mum. <laughs> she recognised it straight away, so that was lovely. I think she's got something made out of it at her house. Uh, not that we're going to have matching outfits when I'm finished, although we do frequently turn up in very similar outfits. Weird mental connection there between us. Um, yes, so I really like it. It's a nice fit, uh, like apart from being slightly too short in the body. Um, I really enjoyed. Um, doing a bit more detailed work on the bib. Um, the majority of the, as I said, <laughs> no, don't you, yeah. The majority of the vest is hand, so hand stitched. Um, so all the seams, all the bias binding was put on by hand. I made all the straps by hand, uh, with hand stitching, which, which took quite a while. Um, the only bit that was machine stitched was the lines down the middle of here and, and I machine stitched the, the bib to the body um, but that was it and yes uh, like I say I'm hoping to make the second version of this um, over the next next week or so uh, <laughs> you stop eating yeah you want to say hello podcast oh, no 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh you think you're so funny um, right yes I think that's everything uh, to say for this episode and um, hopefully I have a bit more to show you next time and, <laughs> and no, no co-hosts um, right then uh, oh yes perhaps should say uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Crafting Nadine or via the blog at 
the many units of nerdy.wordpress.com and um, you, can, you can find <laughs> You can find me over on Instagram <laughs> as Neddy Bobs, but my account there is set to private, so uh, yeah. if you want to send uh, a friend's request on there, you're more than welcome to. Alright then, thank you very much for watching, and I uh, hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Say goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>